You know, man, this is the deal here. My tub and shower faucet in the hall bathroom is leaking outside. My first stop today is going to be the Home Depot. Of course, in the plumbing section, right where they have the right. shark bite fittings. Because today, we are going to build a tub and shower system only using shark bites. Not soldering copper pipe, gluing, or anything. Minimal tools. It don't get any easier than this. Okay, we're back from the store, and I'm going to lay everything out on the table, and we're going to get started. This here is a half inch shark bite 90 or elbow. I hear you and I get it. This is the How To Plumbing Channel. My name is Claude Taylor. To all my subscribers and friends, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel and you'd like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Also, become a subscriber and hit that notification bell so that you can keep up on all the latest videos coming out. Thank you. I'd have to say, knowing what I know, and if I wasn't a plumber, um, this is what I would do if I didn't have any money to uh, build me a shower system. And the package I'm opening up here, this is going to be, this is a shark bite. They call it a wing 90. L90. Uh, these are going to be used for the spout, the tub spout, and the shower head. So we're going to have two of these that we're going to use. Now, back to our story. Um, and also inside the wall. <clears throat> and it's starting to destroy my wall. Actually, it's destroyed, actually, the back side of the wall and the uh, other side. And it's starting to get on the floor, and I don't want it to damage any more of the house. But uh, right now, I just don't have the money to call a plumber to come and change it out. Actually, I did have a plumber come and look at it and give me an estimate, and it was... Now, if you look closely in the inside, you see the little insert, the little plastic insert, and the shark bite teeth that are on the side those teeth are what grabs the pipe and holds it in place and there's a rubber washer that the uh, pipe squeezed through and that seals it and that is the process of a shark bite fitting and how it works now back to our story a little over a thousand dollars and I'm a little shy of that is there any way that I could Go into this wall and rebuild this shower without. Now, depending on the tub and shower valve that you get, it's going to be either uh, it's going to be threaded. More than most likely, that's what we're using these for. Uh, the shower valve, tub and shower valve that I have here is that has male threads. So what I did is purchased uh, female shark bite adapters. So it goes from shark bite to iron pipe is what they call it. Iron pipe meaning the pipes with threads on it. And if you had one, if your tub and shower valve had uh, female adapters, you would go with opposite of what I'm going with here. And you can see these came in a set of four. These was a contractor pack. The good thing about buying it in uh, contractors pack is usually it's bulk and it's uh, much cheaper than buy buying them uh, individually. Back to our story. Learning how to solder copper pipe, which I would love to learn how, but time is of the essence here and I'm sure you understand. Also, I am not interested in gluing any pipe and I am limited on limited on tools. I would love to run PEX pipe actually, but at this time I can't afford the uh, PEX pipe expander. If there is any way possible 
that I can put this shower together, even if it's temporarily, to stop these leaks and stop the water from damaging my home more than it already has. Okay, that's the end of the story. Let's see what we can come up with uh, for anyone that has a limited amount of tools. Maybe a few pipe wrenches or channel lock pliers, screwdriver, whatever have you. And someone that's not interested in learning how to solder copper pipe just yet. Or can afford more of the expensive tools to run PEX pipe. And this uh, galvanized nipple here, I just uh, bought this as a random size. Uh, once you do put the uh, tub and shower valve together and in the wall, uh, that's when you're actually going to want to take a measurement to uh, get the uh, right size nipple that you need. So that when you go to uh, put the um, tub spout on, it will match up with the wall. And what I'm doing here is just showing you that the, uh, the threads on the inside are the same as the threads of the galvanized pipe. Uh, and that's why it's called Iron Pipe 2 to Shark Bite. Now this is a this is a Delta tub and shower valve. I actually wanted to find a um, tub and shower valve that had the um, female threads on the body of the valve itself, but um, this was all they had at the time, so I grabbed this. And Delta's a good um, it's a good tub and shower valve. Uh, I am a Moen guy I really like the uh, mowing products mowing's pretty uh, easy to work with and as far as repairs and finding parts for them and this here is a universal uh, tub spout and universal meaning that you can use it to where to go into the iron pipe right there that's laying on the uh, table there or you can slip it on to a piece of copper pipe right there in the back right here and then squeeze down on it and it'll stay in place but we're not going to use the uh, insert part I'm just putting it in it back in right now uh, we're actually going to go straight to the uh, iron pipe and you will see at the end and this is the uh, scutcheon and when I do say a scutcheon, a scutcheon meaning the chrome parts are the decorative parts of the faucet itself. And it hides a lot of the imperfections behind the wall and behind it itself. And it also protects the uh, valve. And of course you've seen I pulled out the shower head and this is the shower arm. And again this is one of the discussions and this will be for the shower arm itself. course these are the escutcheon uh, screws to screw it down to the uh, valve itself and one thing I like you to keep in mind this is a of course this is a single handle tub and shower valve 
and there are no videos out there that I have that are tub and shower valves with two and three handle faucets and tub valves and the reason that is because those have been outlawed going back into the 80s actually and there's a lot of people that don't know this even some plumbers that are not familiar with it so most single handle tub and shower valves they come in posi temp meaning that uh, it keeps children and uh, older senior citizens from uh, burning themselves and that was the problem with the uh, two handle and three handle faucets kids would uh, just turn the hot on and get straight hot and burn themselves but the new faucets that they have come out with have been designed to prevent that so that you don't get the scalding water and they will have to mix now children and senior citizens can't burn themselves it's just uh, something to keep in mind so try not to uh, find you a uh, two and three handle valve and replace it now you see the back side of this where the uh, you can see the uh, male threads that are coming out and if you look real close you can see the letter C and H and this here is the shark bite removal tool and that's another great thing about the uh, shark bites uh, they're easily to remove especially when you have this tool here and this is a half inch shark bite removal tool see shark bite half inch and if you're going to do something like this I think it's a good idea that you go ahead and pick this tool up now here are the tools that I, I'm going to use to uh, build my uh, shark bite shower system this is a uh, six-way screwdriver and of course I have a measuring tape and back to the uh, six-way screwdriver uh, six ways because they have six different uh, types of uh, tools and of course we're going to use this here my pipe cutting for copper pipe tool and a pair of channel locks channel locks is a brand name you would call these pliers gooseneck pliers but uh, in the field most people just say channel lock channel lock pliers and this cover here uh, actually if you're having this installed and someone's gonna come behind you and install drywall and tile and all that good stuff if you can't put this part back on it helps guide them to uh, where to uh, cut the drywall and they want the drywall to fit around that and that piece to come out a certain distance and then once uh, the drywall and tile is done you can remove that plate I don't know if you can see it it's kinda hard you see that letter C and the letter H right there H for hot and then the cold hot is always on the on the left so when this turns around the hot is going to be on the left and cold is always on the right some tub and shower valves have an indication where the uh, tub and shower it end is this one don't but knowing by the C and the H I know which end is going to be for the shower and what end is going to be for the spout and we're going to use some pipe dough
now that we have the uh, pipe dope on here, we're going to put our uh, female adapter. So now this has been converted from iron pipe to shark pipe. And by the way, this is what you might call a transition fitting. It's transitioning from one type of pipe to another. And in this case, it's transferring from iron pipe to shark pipe. Okay. Now that we just about have all of them on, I am going to start tightening it with my uh, channel lock pliers. And the reason that I didn't pipe dope them all up at once is because I didn't really want to get any of this pipe dope on my hand. So I just pipe dope it one at a time. Okay, now we have it all together. So now it's ready for... Uh, any type of half inch pipe that will uh, go inside of a uh, shark pipe fitting and that would be CPVC, copper pipe or PEX pipe. Any one of those in half inch will go into a shark pipe fitting. And we're going to start this one off we're going to use copper pipe. And this is going to be for the, uh, this is going to go from the shower valve to the uh, shower head. And if you're curious of what the uh, size is that I'm cutting, that I measure that out to be, uh, leave a comment in the description and I'd be more than happy to tell you. If you don't have a pipe reamer, uh, a lot of times some of these, uh, a lot of the uh, copper tubing cutters they do come with a little piece on the back you seen I just pulled it out that's for reaming the uh, inside of the pipe out Because usually, if you if you don't uh, ring the inside of the pipe out, there's a little ledge that hangs over, so you want to remove that ledge so that anything going through the pipe doesn't catch it and stick onto it. Now, most people are familiar with the uh, shark bite fittings. It's fairly simple. You just want to get the uh, pipe in between the uh, plastic insert and the wall of the uh, shark bite so it will squeeze right down in there where the uh, shark bite uh, teeth are and the reason that I'm turning it so that it will go in and line up with the uh, little plastic insert there once you turn it, it makes it a little easier it works it around and works it up in there and from there, once you get it right, you just kind of push and you'll hear the little click, click, like that. But now what we're going to do is going, we're going to uh, pull this uh, 90 back off of here. 
And this time we're going to mark. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use the park uh, shark bite tool so that I can show you how it actually works. It's fairly simple. Right now, I'm trying to uh, give you a great focus on the camera. So when I do go to push it off, it's going to go flying. Uh, there's a better way to do this. I'm, I can get it off easier than that, but this makes it easy for me to show you. And if you noticed, it pushed up on the little sleeve there. And once it pushed up on the sleeve, it relieved the uh, it relieved the uh, shark teeth that are in there, shark bite teeth that are in there. It kind of pushed those out the way so that the pipe can slide right out. Okay, we're gonna we're going to uh, put this back in here, slip it right back in spot again. But this time, we're gonna put we're going to uh, put a mark. On the uh, end of the shark bite, so that we know the, uh, so we get to determine the depth of how far this needs to be pushed in when we go do the other ones. Okay, so we're gonna mark it here, and once we mark, we're gonna pull it back out, and we're gonna get our measurement. And that way, when we uh, each pipe that we have we can just go ahead and put the measurement on there and once we push the shark bite in we know that we are in far enough now it won't go flying all over the place because I can control it and I'm not trying to uh, focus for the camera right now okay there's two marks on here the first one is when I didn't have it in far enough but uh, well once I finally pushed it in further I got the uh, second mark which should be the uh, actual true mark and so we're gonna measure it and right there we see seven eighths about seven eighths right there an uh, inch and seven eighths I know that I'm measuring it from the three inch mark but a lot of us do this out in the field it makes it a little easier to read rather than trying to go to the end sometimes now this should slide right into the uh, second mark which it did so now we know that uh, all the other ones that we push in, we're going to want to measure 7 eighths and push it in to 7 eighths and we know that it's in solid. C and H. Cold, hot. It's uh, really not that hard pushing these in. Um, okay, well, you see we have it in there. It's a little difficult for me right now because I'm trying to uh, give you a angle shot with the uh, camera.
and this is going to be the bottom part for the tub spout and this is a very important part right here when measuring this because you don't want it to you don't want to measure it too short to where it would uh, it would conflict with the uh, discussion if you bring it up too high it would be in the way of the discussion and you won't be able to get the discussion on or the uh, tub spout so you just want to make sure that you uh, have the measurement to where it will uh, miss the discussion and the directions will be in the uh, box itself uh, I've been doing it a long time so I pretty much know the uh, measurements are going to be and it's going to be six inch center to center from the uh, center of the valve to the uh, center of that um, wing L so if that's going to be six inch then I'm not going to uh, cut a six inch piece that mean I have to make it center to center six inch so now from there I will measure the piece in the middle which, which I'm not mistaken was um, it was three and three quarters something like that when I measured it the first time But don't go by my measurements. Please read the directions. I know some of this might become redundant but for the uh, viewers out there that you know there are people out there that actually want to see uh, they want to catch the uh, what they might have missed or they want to get it a different aspect because uh, sometimes even though it's redundant it's not exactly done exactly the same way uh, so I do understand that okay now we're going to we're going to get uh, seven eighths and seven eighths on each end of this uh, small piece of pipe we're measuring those pieces so that when we slip it into the uh, this is the uh, three and three quarter inch piece of copper for the uh, tub spout Okay, we have our we already have our marks on here, so we're just going to push it up till we meet our marks and we know that it will be in solid and connected properly. One thing about shark bite fittings when you do uh push the pipe up into the uh, shark bite itself uh, the shark bite needs to be as straight as possible uh, any pipe that's crooked uh, will leak on you so keep it straight okay now this will give you an idea of the uh, how things are gonna go with the uh, tub spout All this is going to come back off right now. I'm just 
showing you guys as much as I can show you because I know everyone doesn't understand like everyone else everybody's different so hopefully I can cover everyone and reach everybody that I can reach with this Okay, most tub and shower valves are going to have 8 inch spread. That means from center of the hot to the center of the cold is going to be 8 inches. So we're not going to make this any different. We may be a little off because of the uh, shark bite fittings are a little longer. But what we need to do here is we're going to cut two short pieces. And after measuring them, uh, they're going to be, we're going to have to use um, what we call closed nipples. So a closed piece of pipe. And a closed piece of pipe means that the pipe is really short and it's just enough on each end of the pipe to go inside the fittings and the fittings would actually butt up with one another. So we're going to cut two closed pieces for this. And the closed pieces for this is going to, we already know 7 eighths go in one. So we're going to uh, take 7 eighths and 7 eighths and we're going to come up with an uh, uh, inch and three quarters. So we're going to cut two pieces that are inch and three quarters, slip them in there and butt it together. Okay, now we have the two closed pieces cut out.
and if you're doing with this with copper be uh, very careful the copper the ends of the copper could be very sharp that's why you see that I'm pushing it down here on the table but yet I don't want to push the uh, And once we get the two pieces butted up, we'll know that we have it in and nice and secure. Now you can't even see a piece of copper. But on the next one, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, somehow I cut this piece a little longer than the other. Um, so you will see a little small piece of copper, but it's not enough to... Uh, throw us off too far from our 8 inch spread. As a matter of fact, the uh, 8 inch spread actually don't apply too much anymore because that was back in the days when they were using two handles and three handle turbine shire valves. And in some cases with the older ones, they even had 11 inch spread. So now that one's as far as it'll go so the only thing I can come up with is I did cut that piece a little longer than I needed to and what I'm going to do here now is just cut some random pieces this uh, shower is not going to be hooked up to anything this is just for demonstration purposes And I will not be taking the shark bite fittings back to the store, if that's what you're thinking. No, because I can use it for another project down the road sometime. See, that was supposed to be an 8 inch spread, and it actually came up to about 8.5 inch. Now, um, a lot of homes that are on slabs, especially down here in the southern part of the country, the um, hot and cold water lines coming out from the tub and shower valve are usually going to go up or down. But if you're up further, the Midwest, up north, whatever like that, in most cases, the tub and shower valve, the hot and cold... Um, lines are going to actually go down because most cases up there you're going to have basements and the good thing about the shark bite fittings we can just swing it up or down either way we want to swing it And one thing I would like to mention is shark bite fittings. Some municipalities and some areas and some parts of the country, some they don't allow shark bite fittings, and some places they do. Um, a lot of inspectors would recommend if you are going to use shark bites that they are in an area that. A person or anyone can get access to in case there is an issue with the shark bite fittings. So if you are going to build something like this and put it into your uh, um, new tub and shower enclosure, I'd recommend putting a uh, on the back side. Usually there's a closet or a wall, hopefully, and in that closet you can put a large access door to. Uh, get to this stuff just something to think about okay now this uh, tub and shire valve is, is complete it's all put together with shark bite fittings so we're gonna take it from here and 
tomorrow I will build a small frame for it, just a frame, just a display frame, so that I can actually, you know, show you how it would uh, stand. And right now I'm just kind of uh, putting it together here so that to uh, give you an actual view of what it would take to put this together uh, once you do get it into the wall. And we'll take it back apart again. This is just for uh, visual purposes. Nope, I'm not following directions. But you can see the tub spout and the uh, escutcheon for the uh, tub and shower valve. You see, you can see the distance that we have enough to get the shower escutcheon on and also to screw on the uh, tub and shower spout, the spout for the uh, water in the tub. I know that uh, some of this stuff that I am doing here may seem to be very simple, but you would be surprised of the people out there that it may not be simple to and catch their attention on something they may have missed. I say that to say this, I would be considered one of those people. Um, I am the type of person that would like to catch and see as much as I can. I know you're out there and I hope that I can help you. You know, one thing about the Delta tub and shower valve, I mean, like I said, Delta is a good product. I've just been installing mowing most of my life um right now the this uh this handle throws me off it doesn't seem to turn as far but actually that's how delta works that's how their tub and shower faucet handle works mowing on the other hand you'll have seems that you have a little more rotation on it okay so i propped it up for now to give you an idea of what it looks like from a little distance here and like I said, tomorrow we will come back and we'll build a little frame for this, a little display frame. All right, it's Friday, and I just got off work, got home as fast as I could so that I can uh, get started and build this frame before nighttime hit me. I'm outside working in the yard. So this is going to be the frame for the tub and shower valve. 
and I'm on call, so I'm gonna have to work fast in case they call me in. This uh, measurement here is just for my purpose to kind of center it here on this here. But if you were at home, most tubs and showers, most tubs, let me say, tub and shower combinations, the tub is usually 30 inches. So the center is usually going to be around 15 inches. Uh, this one here is going to be different because I'm just making a display frame. This is why we need the uh, wing 90 so that we can screw it down to some type of backing so that the uh, tub and shower valve doesn't move on us on the inside of the wall. And it would be the best if you can use all three holes you know screw a screw into each uh, ear to sticking out wing Okay, here's the display and this is what it's going to look like inside your wall. And again, for all intended purpose, we're going to simulate putting it together. Installing the uh, escutcheon and the trim. This is the trim. All the chrome pieces.
in this particular handle, this is you you, you needed a uh, you need a uh, Allen wrench for it. And what I have here is a set of Allen wrenches with assorted sizes. And what size I'm using right now, I'm not sure. I do know that Moen has a handle that's similar to this, but Moen they come with the uh, Allen wrench made just for theirs. Uh, just a note to Delta. And now you can see I've taken it apart and I've actually put in CPVC pipe. Same diameter as the copper pipe. The outside diameter anyway. And here it is. We still have the CPVC riser, but that can be changed out to PEX as you can see, and use PEX pipe. Again, I'm Claude Taylor, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and become a subscriber. Also, hit that notification bell. Thank you.